learn.ba. In the last video, I introduced the concept of a business process analyst and a business systems analyst. And I talked uh, a little bit about how you can decide which one of those two uh, types of business analyst roles are right for you. In this video, I'm gonna get a little bit more specific about some of the skills that you're going to need depending on which one of those two uh, types of business analysis roles you choose for your own career. So if you want to be a business process analyst, what I said was that you want to focus uh, a lot more on learning uh, the process design skills. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. If you want to be a business systems analyst, I mentioned that you want to make sure that you know SQL. That's probably the core skill that you want to know. Uh, and I'm going to talk about a little bit more about what the systems analyst actually uses SQL for. Before I get into those, the one core skill that every business analyst that needs to have, regardless of whether they want to be a process analyst or a systems analyst, is the ability to produce business requirements and functional specifications, or uh, software uh, requirement specifications, uh, SRSs, as, as some uh, companies call them. So the core skill that you need to build, and if you're just getting into the business analysis career before even focusing on process design or focusing on an SQL, what you need to learn how to do is to pick up the core business analysis skill. You cannot call yourself an analyst if you do not know how to produce business requirements and specifications, uh, because that is the defining characteristic of an analyst, is uh, the ability to produce BRDs and SRSs or functional specs. So uh, I'll talk more about that in a different video, but let's get into uh, the business process analysis skill set. Process design is the core skill set. And so uh, what I mean by process design is not just the ability to do process mapping, which is a subset of business process design. Uh, process mapping uh, is the ability to document business processes. Process design is the ability to help the company build out new business processes. And so that distinction is very important because uh, sometimes on job applications, you'll see process mapping as a skill set that they look for. Some companies just need process mapping skills, but uh, other companies in their, uh, in their job postings will say process mapping skills when they actually mean process design skills. And design skills are a lot more involved than just mapping. Uh, the thing that I want to get through, uh, the, the point that I want to get through for on process design is that the way you learn how to do process design has to be requirements oriented, which means that your business requirements have to be infused in the process design activities that you do. And so there, uh, if you look out onto uh, the internet to try to find out what kind of process design skills you need to learn, you're gonna come across a whole slew of different uh, techniques of doing process design and doing process mapping. What you need to make sure is that whatever methodology you choose to learn is not disconnected from business requirements. And um, if you want to know more about that, you can leave a comment and I'll elaborate on that more. But the point that you want to understand for uh, the type of process design that you want to learn is to make sure that your process design skills and your process mapping skills both incorporate business requirements into the process design. The other skill set that you want to learn as a process analyst is the ability to influence without having any authority. As an analyst, you do not have any kind of authority to tell uh, anybody what to do. But as part of your job, you have to make sure that uh, the business process works a certain way in order for the whole solution to hold together. Now, how do you do that? As somebody who doesn't have any kind of authority, how do you actually go about doing that? And the key to that is knowing how to influence people without having any authority. So that's the second broad skill set that you want to focus on as a business process analyst. Business systems analyst, skill number one, SQL. By far, uh, it is the single most important skill, and I've said it many times and I'll say it many times more. You wanna learn SQL if you wanna be a BSA. Now, what does the BSA use SQL for? 
because the BSA can be expected to do a lot, a whole a variety of different types of work. The uh, two main things that the BSA uses SQL for are uh, what I like to call data discovery and the second one is for data migration. Now data discovery is a very general description uh, of the set of activities that the BSA does to figure out what the structure, what the table structure of a database looks like and your ability to query a database is an essential skill for you to be able to do data discovery. So for example, if you're starting to learn a new application, as a BSA, what you wanna do is you wanna understand the table structure in that application very well. Uh, and the way you do that is by running a whole host of queries on different tables to figure out what kind of data is in there and then somehow reverse engineering, not somehow, I mean, I can explain to you how to do it, but uh, trying to figure out how to reverse engineer that in, back into what's called an entity model, okay? So all of these things I'll talk about in uh, a lot of other videos, but data discovery is the first uh, main activity that the BSA does using SQL. Data migration is the second one. And so you need really basic uh, SQL skills to do data discovery, but you need a lot more advanced skills if you want to perform data migration as a systems analyst. Data migration is the set of activities that the BSA has to do to make sure that they can get data ported from one system into another system. And so typically, uh, the BSA needs to perform data migration on projects where uh, the project is replacing an existing system. What has to happen is that the data in that existing system is good and the business usually still really needs that data. They can't just throw that out just because they have a new application. So it becomes part of the BSA's job to make sure that they can take that data, they can cleanse it, they can transform it and fit it in to the table structure of the new system that's being delivered. So that is what is called data migration. So uh, SQL is the, um, the primary skill that you wanna learn if you wanna be a BSA. Now, uh, having said all this, I'm gonna tie all of this back to the original point that I was trying to make that you cannot focus on SQL, you cannot focus on process design if you have not yet learned the core BA skill of producing business requirements and producing functional specifications. So if you're a new business analyst and you are uh, having a hard time trying to figure out what kind of skill set you should build first, there is uh, no competition there. There should not be a question in your mind about what that skill set is. And that skill set is the ability to produce business requirements and specifications. So let me talk a little bit more about what business requirements are. As an analyst, your role is usually somewhere in between the business side of the company and the IT side of the company. The purpose of business requirements is to express the business's need in a way that IT can understand. So I'll repeat that again. The purpose of business requirements is to make sure that you can express the business's real need in a way that IT can understand. And so if you think uh, of business requirements from that angle, you can start to uh, imagine that your business requirements documents are in a lot of ways, they're kind of like a contract between the business side of your company and the IT side of your company because essentially what the business requirements document does is it, it uh, tells IT, here's what the business needs to be able to function properly in the future. And once the business signs off on the business requirements document, that actually becomes like an official document in your company. And now it becomes the job of IT to make sure that they can deliver to each one of those requirements that are in that document. Functional specifications are a much more detailed version of your business requirements. So many of the business folks do not understand much about IT. So that's why they focus a lot more on what's called the business requirements document. The functional specification, the purpose of that is to take those business requirements and to bring them down to an excruciating level of detail. And the reason why you need an excruciating level of detail is because IT cannot have any, uh, they can't play any guessing games as to what needs to be built. And so what you do in your functional specifications is you provide all of the details that IT needs 
for them to be able to implement the business requirements that are part of the contract, right? Part of the business requirements document. That's just a general overview of what uh, business requirements and functional specifications are, and that is what you should be focusing on if you're just getting started out. If you're already an analyst and you feel like uh, you already know uh, how to produce that, and you've picked up that skill and you know that those skills are fairly solid, the thing you should start focusing on, depending on whether you want to be a more focused BPA or BSA, are the skills that I talked about. BPAs learn how to do process design and process mapping, uh, and they learn how to influence without authority. The BSA focuses on learning SQL for a lot of the different activities that they have to perform. So again, if you would like to learn more about business analysis, head over to the website at learn.ba. I've published a number of different articles where I talk about different subjects that are relevant to business analysis. And so uh, you can go over to the website and uh, read the articles there and you can submit your questions in the comment sections if you want me to elaborate on anything that's uh, in the articles that have been published. Uh, but that's a really good starting place because it starts to cover off a lot of the core issues and a lot of the core concepts that you need to understand if you want to be in that.